Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, we're going to create a game of rock, paper, scissors using JavaScript. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's do this thing. We're going to create an H1 heading with text of rock, paper, scissors for a title. We'll create three buttons. The first one will be for rock. You can add some text of rock. But you know what? I like using emojis. I'm going to use an emoji instead. I would like an emoji of a fist. And I'm going to zoom in until we add some CSS. Let's create a button for paper. That'll work. And scissors. Maybe a peace sign. With each of these buttons, I will set the onClick event handler equal to a JavaScript function. We'll name the function play game. Now with these functions, we're going to pass in an argument. The first will be a string of rock. Now if you use double quotes, HTML is going to be confused where this event handler ends. Our argument is going to be a string, but it's going to be within single quotes because we're already using double quotes. Let's copy this attribute because I don't feel like typing it again. The second argument will be for a string of paper and then scissors. Let's enclose our buttons within a div element. This div element will have an ID of choices. Let's cut our buttons and paste them within the div element. Outside of the div element, we'll create another div element. We will display the player's choice. Player colon space. The ID of this div element will be player display. This will display the word rock, paper, or scissors, depending on which button we pick. Let's do this for computer. Text will be computer. ID computer display. We should display a result. Who won? The ID will be result display. Just for some temporary text, I'm going to add it's a tie. When we style this with CSS, I would like to be able to see the updates. We'll get rid of this pretty soon. Eventually, we'll add in a score tracker, but we'll do that after our game is at least working. Okay, let's head to our CSS style sheet. I'm going to zoom back to 100%. Let's select the body of our document. I will set the font family to be Arial with a backup of sans serif. Let's set the font weight to be bold throughout this application. I will set any margin to be zero around the body. Use Flexbox to display the elements. Display Flex. The Flex direction will be a column. And Align Items Center. Let's select our H1 element. I need to increase the font size. Font size, 3.5 REM. For a color, pick a color. For me, I'll set the lightness to 20%. Now we're going to select our div element of choices. Actually, let's make this a class. Class choices. Select the class of choices, add margin bottom of 30 pixels. Within this development, we need to select all the buttons. We will select the class of choices, select all buttons within this class. We'll increase the font size to 7.5 REM. These buttons need to be big. I will set a minimum width of 160 pixels. Add a little bit of margin between each button. Zero pixels on the top and bottom, 10 pixels on the sides. For the buttons, I would like rounded corners. I would like these buttons to be a circle. I can set the border radius to something massive, like 250 pixels. That will give us some rounded buttons. And pick a background color. Background, color, I want something blue. 
I've already pre-picked a color, so I'm going to use this. Now, when I hover my cursor over one of the buttons, I would like my cursor to change into a pointer. And that does work. Let's also add a transition effect. Let's change the background color to E is after half a second. Let's access the hover pseudo class of all the buttons of choices. Take the background color. I'll set the lightness to be 20% lighter. Each button is going to light up when you hover your cursor over the button. Then we'll work on the displays next. We're going to select the player display and the computer display. These are ideas. Player display and computer display. Let's set the font size to be a 2.5 REM. And for the result display, where it says it's a tie, that's the ID of result display. Set the font size to be 5 REM and I'll add some margin to the top and bottom. 30 pixels to the top and bottom, zero on the sides. Okay, that is good enough for now. So we no longer need this placeholder for the result display. Let's add some functionality. We have a lot of constants to declare. Const choices. Choices will be an array of strings. We'll have rock, paper, and scissors. We need to get the player display and the computer display so we can update them. Const player display equals document dot get element by ID. The ID that I'm selecting is player display. Then we have computer display. Computer display. And a result display. This one, it's empty currently. Const result display equals document dot get element by ID result display. We'll factor in scoring later. We need a function of play game that accepts one argument, the player's choice. Function play game. We have one parameter, player choice. When we play a new game, we have to pick a choice for the computer between rock, paper, or scissors. What we could do is generate a random number between 0 and 2. Rock is index 0, paper is index 1, scissors is index 2. We'll create a constant within play game of computer choice. I'm declaring it within the function so we can update it every time we play a new game. Equals take our array of choices at index. For the index, we'll generate that random number using the random method of math. Math.randommethod times 3. Then we need to round it because it's not going to be a whole number. Math.floor to round it down. So the computer's choice will be a random index between 0 through 2, which will give us randomly either rock, paper, or scissors. Hey, this is Bro from the Future. One thing that would be good for us to do is along the way, use console.log just to be sure that what we've been writing has been working. So within our computer's choice, let's console.log whatever that is. So if this does work, after clicking one of these buttons, the computer is either gonna pick rock, paper, or scissors. The computer picked scissors just now. Scissors, scissors. It really likes scissors apparently. So yeah, the player's choice is being populated with the string of rock, paper, or scissors. I just wanted to confirm that. And we need a result. What are we going to display to the screen? Result will be an empty string for now. First, let's check to see if the player's choice is equal to the computer's choice. That means it's a tie. If player's choice is strictly equal to the computer's choice, maybe we both pick rock. Well, then we'll take our result to be displayed and set it equal to be it's a tie. Else, somebody is going to win. Let's add an else statement. We can use a switch. 
we can examine a value against matching cases. We'll examine the player's choice. Does the player's choice match the case of rock? Do these two values match? If so, we'll use the ternary operator. We'll check the condition of if our computer's choice is strictly equal to scissors. If so, question mark, that's the ternary operator. If we pick rock and the computer picks scissors, we will return you win. Otherwise, if this condition is false, well, that means the computer picked paper. If our choices already don't match and we picked rock, that means they either picked scissors or paper. If they didn't pick scissors, that means they picked paper. So they win. That means we lose. You lose. Whatever string is returned, we're going to assign it to result. Result equals whatever is returned. Either you win or you lose. Then we should add a break after this case. All right, let's copy this case and everything within it. Let's paste it. If the player's choice matches the case of paper and the computer's choice is strictly equal to rock, that means if that's true, you win, else you lose. Let's copy this case and everything within it. Case scissors. If the computer's choice equals paper, then you win, otherwise you lose. After we move beyond the if-else statements, we need to update the text on the screen. So we will take the player's display, set the text content to equal a template string of player colon space, add a placeholder, the player's choice. Did we pick rock, paper, or scissors? Then let's do this with the computer's choice. Select the text content of the computer display. The text will be computer. We will display the variable of computer choice, the one that was picked randomly. And take our result display, which has no text content currently, set it equal to be result. Okay, let's see what we have currently. Let's pick rock. It's a tie. Paper, you win. Scissors, you lose. What we'll work on next, depending on the result that's displayed, if we win, I would like the text to be green. If we lose, I want the text to be red. Going to our CSS style sheet, we're gonna add three classes. Green text, red text, pick a font color, pick something green. And for the red text, pick a red font color. If we win or lose, we're going to add one of these classes to the class list of our result display. So going back to our JavaScript file, after we display the result. Now we're going to add a switch. We're going to examine our result. We will add a case of you win. If our value matches this case, let's take our result display, access the class list, use the add method, add the class of green text, then break. Let's copy this case, paste it. We will add a case for you lose. Add the class of red text if we lose. Let's see what we have currently. If we win, you get green text. If you lose, you get red text. But now if it's a tie, we have red text. With each new game, we should reset the color back to the original. So before updating the color and displaying it, let's take our result display, access the class list, use the remove method, remove any class of green text, 
and red text. Let's see if this works. You lose. It's a tie. That's black. You lose. You win. The colors seem to be working. All right, now let's add a scoring mechanism. We'll have to head back to our HTML file. After our result display, we're going to create a div element. The first div element will have a class of score display. The text for the score display will be player score colon space. Then we'll add a span element within with text of zero. I will give the span element a unique ID of player score display. The reason I'm putting this number within a span element, I'm going to style this number different from the rest of the div element, the player score. OK, let's copy this div element and paste it. We need another for computer. Computer score. The ID of the span element will be computer score display. Going back to our CSS style sheet, we'll add the following. After our result display, we will select the class of score display. Increase the font size. Font size will be 2rem. For the actual numbers, I'm going to change the color. With the CSS property where the font color is green, I'll add an additional selector. Let's select the ID of player score display. I would also like that to be that shade of green. And for the red text, let's select the ID of computer score display. So the computer score, that number will be red. OK, now we just need to add functionality to the scoring mechanism. So back to the top, we're going to select the ID of player score display. Const player score display equals document dot get element by ID player score display. And we need the same thing for the computer. Computer score display. And we need a score value, a number. So we can work with it. Let player score equal zero. Let computer score equal zero. Going to the bottom of this function, within our switch, within our case of you win, we're going to increment our player score. Player score plus plus. Then take our player score display and update it. Access the text content, set it equal to whatever the player score is. Then let's do this with our computer. Computer score plus plus. That's if we lose. And computer score display equals the computer score. And that should be everything. Let's see if this program works. You lose, you win, you win, it's a tie. You win, you win, you lose. The player score is four, the computer score is two. All right, everybody, so that is a game of rock, paper, scissors you can make using JavaScript.